Welcome back to the Web Animation Programming Guide. Today I'll be showing you how to program script-based animations with JavaScript. You would use script-based animations for things such as making video game assets move around on the screen at consistent speeds regardless of the distance the objects need to move, such as a character moving according to the user's control over the character because the character may need to move halfway across the screen or maybe just a couple of steps or all the way across the screen and you want that speed that the object travels to be a consistent speed no matter how far it has to move but it's not limited to things like that ultimately using timing methods provides a greater level of control over how things animate on the screen and there are three timing functions that we can use there's set interval set timeout and request animation frame Request animation frame is a newer method that allows the browser software to dictate the display refresh rate, the repaint rate, which is usually something like 60 frames per second. And you can also use set timeout and set interval. Now set timeout would be more like the request animation frame method and set interval can also be used for script based animations and I'll be showing you how to use those. Okay, we're going to begin with these assets, which is a start and stop buttons, and then a little object or asset on the screen that we're going to animate. And its ID is thing1. Now, when the start button is pressed, we're going to run a function called start animation. And when the stop button is pressed, we're going to run a function called stop animation. So we have to write those functions right now. So I'm just going to get you started, and then I'm going to challenge you with a homework assignment that will help you build up your critical thinking and your problem solving abilities because those are essential skills that every programmer should have is their own ability to problem solve and be able to write scripts on their own without being handed copy paste solutions so what I'm gonna do is go under my assets and I'm going to type in a script element I'm gonna make sure I close it and you can have your script element up in the head section of the document or even in an external document as long as you use the window load event to initialize some of your scripting. But for this example, I'm just going to have my scripting underneath the assets. That way, all of the assets are loaded into the program before the script runs. And the first thing I'll do is set up an object reference for thing1. So we'll type in var el, which is short for element, is equal to document.getElementById thing1. Then we'll quickly create another variable called requid, which is short for request ID, because that's a variable that our script is going to use. Then we'll just take the name of this function, start animation, and we'll type in function, start animation, open close parentheses, opening curly brace, and closing curly brace. And we'll also make a function, stop animation, right under that. Now, what my objective is inside of the start animation function is to move thing one on the horizontal plane which is the x-axis right and left so inside of that function I'm going to say element dot style dot left property is equal to a certain number of pixels so we're gonna add a number programmatically here that's going to increment so in between parentheses I'm gonna type in element which is thing one dot offset left plus equals one and then here I'll put in a little plus sign to concatenate this number that is programmatically derived to px so basically the string will be a dynamic number px just like you would set anything in your CSS but we're gonna do it dynamically so we're setting the CSS left property dynamically using a dynamic number so what this does is it reads the left position of where the asset is on the screen and it's going to increment it by one by saying plus equals one so each time the repaint or the callback function runs which is start animation each time it runs it's going to increment by one which is going to create the animated effect of movement then directly under that we're going to type in requid which is our request ID variable and we're going to make that equal to window dot request animation frame 
and we'll put the callback function as a parameter within the request animation frame method. So basically, when the animation is started, when this function is called to run, it's going to keep running at approximately 60 frames per second because the request animation frame calls a function to run at the browser's default refresh rate, which is usually 60 frames per second. So let's see what that gives us. If we hit start, we see movement, but it won't stop because we have to put in the functionality we need inside of the stop animation function. Now this little program leaves something to be desired because all it does is start and stop. And furthermore, if you were to press start multiple times, it's going to speed up because the callback function is going to be called so many times that it's going to give the illusion that the object is speeding up every time the start button is pressed. That's because the callback function is going to be called over and over and over again. And each time it's going to be running a 60 per, per second frame refresh. So it's just compounding every time you hit the start button. So there's a couple of ways you can go about alleviating that problem. And also you might want to have an application and it'd be more realistic to have an application where this says right where you have controls for right, left. That way this object can be moved right or left or even up and down by the user. For instance, if you're creating some type of video game. So what I'll do is I'll go in here and I'll type on mouse down start animation and then we'll put on mouse up event we're going to stop the animation so we can just take that function here put it there and remove this button altogether and then this can say right so then when we take a look at our application now when I hold down right then let go of it it stops right so every time I hit the right control it moves the object to the right now you might want to have another control that says left that way the user can move the character or the object to the left so let's go ahead and copy that button and we'll put left as this label now if we left it just like that and we hit that the object's still going to move to the right so we need some logic in place so what we'll do is put a new variable called dir and then we'll put a new function in place called change dir and then we'll just put an incoming argument of d and then we'll t change the dir variable to whatever the value of d is so what we'll do is take that function name and in the right button before the start animation function is called we're going to call the change dir function and then put a semicolon that way two functions will be called on mouse down we're going to call the change dir function and the start animation function so what we'll do is put a string in place here and name it right we'll just put the string of right going into the change dir function that way when the function change di or change direction is called the word right is going to be passed through it as an argument that argument is scooped up here as D and the DIR which is short for direction the direction variable is going to be changed to right now we'll copy that one and we'll put it in the left button as well and we'll just put in the string of left here that way the change direction will be the dir or direction variable will be changed to say left so then what we can do is go into the start animation function and just type in if else condition statements this way you can give your users the ability to move the character or object left or right and then we'll put an else if condition right under that that way we'll have the logic for going both left and right so we'll say if dir is equal to right, then we already know this line of code makes the object animate to the right. So we'll take that and put it up in that condition. Then we'll say, uh, we can just copy that. And if 
else if dir is equal to left. So if the user wants to move the object left, we'll just change this functionality a little bit to say minus equals. So instead of incrementing and going to the right, we're going to decrement. That will make the uh, left position go the other way. So it'll go to the left instead of the right using this logic right here. Now let's take a look at our application. So when I hold down the right, it'll go to the right. When I let go, it stops. When I hold down left, it goes to the left. When I let go, it stops. So that way you can provide controls to the user in a game type scenario. Or it doesn't even have to be a game. It could be any, any type of application or program that you're creating. Okay, now here's where your homework assignment comes in, which will help you with your critical thinking and problem solving skills. What I want you to do is add two more buttons, one that says up and one that says down. Then you can run the same functions and instead of right and left being fed in as an argument to the change direction function, you can put up and down. And then you put in more conditional logic here to say add more else if. You can add more else if condition statements here just like we did for the left. You can add more of those to evaluate to see if dir direction is equal to up or equal to down. And then what you do is you change the style dot top. You see up here you have the top position set and by the way elements that you want to move around if you're going to use left right or left and top changes for animation they have to be position absolute or relative or even fixed so if you don't have absolute relative or fixed the object won't move so that's why we have position absolute set here so basically what you want to do is add the functionality and instead of changing the elements style dot left, you're going to change the element style dot top. And then you can use the uh, el dot offset top instead of offset left. See what I'm saying? So that's your homework assignment. It shouldn't be very hard for you to figure all of that out. And that way you'll have an application that has right, left, up, down controls for your user to allow them to move that object anywhere that they want on the screen, up, left, right, top, or up, down, right, and left. And remember, you can just change these numbers here to a higher number if you want to increase the speed at which that seems to move. So that's your homework assignment. And it should be fun and easy to do. And there are also ways that you can add another variable to check and see if the start animation function has already been triggered to run, that it can't be triggered again. Like, remember, we had that compounding uh, issue whenever we, before we changed it all to use on mouse down and on mouse up, when it was just on click. Remember, we had that compounding issue where it would sp seem to speed up. Inside of the start animation, you can evaluate to see if the animation is already running. And if it's already running, you don't want to allow it to compound and run more. You don't want this function to run more, which will make your application a little bit buggy. Now, I wanted to show you a similar example that does a similar thing like we started off with. But this time, we're using set interval, which is another timing method but for animations it's recommended that we use the request animation frame method and in this case you really don't even need the window reference there because the window is the top level object so those functions or those methods will run without uh, having to put the window object identifier before them so let's take a look see it all still works the same but I'll just leave those in place. And here we have set interval, which is the same deal. You can have window dot set interval or not. And 
in this case we have a very similar application it basically does the same exact thing that we did before but it's using set interval this time to start the animation up and make it run every 30 milliseconds so you can have a little bit more control when you use set timeout or set interval you can actually control the um, the display refresh rate when you're using request animation frame it just uses the browser software the browser software's uh, default display refresh rate in this case you can actually set the refresh rate make it go a lot slower than uh, 60 frames per second because you can put any number that you want here and that represents milliseconds but for animations I would recommend using request animation frame I just wanted to show you how you can do a very similar thing using the other timing methods in JavaScript so here's set interval and actually if you use set timeout it would look more like this application where set timeout would run inside of the start animation function and it would just keep making the start animation function keep being called back because your uh, your set timeout method would be sitting right here in the same place as request animation frame so I just wanted to show you how you know you can uh, use any timing functions you want okay so you've got the knowledge you've got your homework assignment so I want you to add a up and down buttons to this application to allow the user to move the game asset or the animated asset around on the screen up and down also instead of just left and right alright I hope you've enjoyed this exercise and I hope it enables you to create a lot of cool creative things in your applications maybe you can even start creating games and interactive applications that allows the user to move things around according to controls that you set up so keep yourself happy and healthy and I'll see you in the next exercise which will be part 5 and if you like you can leave a comment on what you might like to see as far as functionality for animated applications games or whatever bye bye